The greatest day in motorsports comes to a close with the Coke 600 and New Jersey's Martin Tricks Jr. takes home the victory for the second time in his cup career. Welcome to the NASCAR MDK Inside the Lines pre -race show, post race show as you say. I'm your host Jack Krause and what a Coke 600. We started the day off in Monaco which was meh to all right. I mean it's Monaco, what did you expect? We then moved on to Indianapolis where we saw an amazing race. One of the best Indy 500s I've ever watched and I didn't think the Coke 600 would be able to live up to the expectations. Well, it didn't exceed, but it was pretty awesome to watch. So let's get right into it with the race highlights for the Coke 600. William Byron on the Hendrick Chevrolet started on the pole for this race. So the outside of him was Eric Amarola. This race, of course, with this package brought a lot of exciting restarts. And this one was no different at the start of the green flag coming off a of turn two. William Byron was not able to clear the 10 car of Eric Amarola. He was able to stay side by side as Kyle Busch was just all over the back bumper of William Byron, giving him a bit of a moment there in the back straight And into turn three and four, William Byron was able to clear the number 10 car of Eric Amarola. And Byron would lead the first lap, I should say the first few laps of the Coca-Cola 600. This will be the first time I think he'd actually lead the Coke 600 in his second start in this race. Then, uh, this happened around lap three, I should say. Kyle Larson was driving a bit too hard, made contact with the outside wall, no harm, no foul. However, first cost will come out on lap 30, uh, 23. Eric Jones, the first victim of the right front tire problems for Joe Gibbs Racing, blows a right front tire coming uh, in the middle of turns three and four. This just another bad run for him he had for the last few weeks just had bad luck coming his way lap 27 the first restart kyle bush able to cut down low to clear the inside driver of austin dillon as a head on the turns one and two but this will then bring up a good battle between the 18 of kyle bush and the four car of kevin harvick they were battling all of the race for the fat pass few laps then with lap 33 into turns one and two kevin harvick was able to clear the number 18 car of Kyle Busch. However, that will not be the end of it as Kyle Busch would then come back, give him a little bump and says, hey, I'm still here. Crosses underneath the four car of Kevin Harvick to take the lead back from the four car. And not only with them two battling, that brought in the 24 car of William Byron to make it a three horse battle for the lead. And this stage one brought in some exciting action, but this would all come to a halt on lap 48. What our second victim of right front tire issues, Matt DiBenedetto. Rolls the right front tire and turns one and two, a JGR affiliate. Uh, this would just be an overall wacky day for Toyotas. Then with 26 laps to go, Martin Tricks Jr. hits the wall from a right front tire issue and causes another caution. All three blown tires have come from JGR affiliates. Then with 19 laps to go, Brad Kozlowski takes the lead away from Daniel Hemrick who stayed out on old tires. However, four laps later with 15 laps to go, Kyle Busch checks up in front of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And then just decides to turn the number 17 car of Stenhouse off of turn number four to bring out another caution, which of course brought out another restart. And that brought out another caution with nine, excuse me, with nine laps to go. Daniel Hemrick squeezed up in front of Clint Boyer on the trial to bring out another caution. Five laps to go. Stage one. Brad Kozlowski to the inside. Kevin Harvick on the outside lane. They had a side-by-side -side battle for the last two to three laps or so. Chase Elliott tried to give him a good push, but it was not going to be able to work. Johnson and Suarez getting that little suck sucker hole. Created a four-wide battle. Allow allows Logano to get into this lead pack and allows Mar or Brad Kozlowski to scoot away to win stage one with Denny Hamlin in second and Kyle Busch in a third position. Stage two started off with Brad Kozlowski and Denny Hamlin as they won the race off of pit road. Kozlowski to the inside of Denny Hamlin. Kozlowski had a very strong car in the early portion of this race. Kyle Busch will try to uh, take up the lead of Kozlowski but got loose and that allowed teammates of Johnson to go to the outside of Bush and his teammate Brown to go to the inside of Bush for fourth and fifth. Now there are many drivers on the move in this race. Johnson, Jimmy Johnson was on the move. Ryan Blaney was also on the move. But no, most notably was Chase Elliott the number nine car and especially in this second stage in the early portion of the second stage he started back outside the top ten and made his way up into the top five. Uh, it was battling Kyle Busch and Paul Menard for the seventh position coming off of turn number two. Kyle Busch and Menard was battling for a position and then out of nowhere, Chase Elliott gets a huge run, was able to get by the 21 car of Menard and get by the number 18 of Kyle Busch and then eventually was able to get by Eric Amarola and uh, William Byron for fifth. Then on lap 127, another caution will come out and this involves the number 37 car of Chris Busch. He had a 
He has had a tough two weeks here at Charlotte. Broke a track bar in the All-Star Open and then blew a raw front tire to bring out another caution. Restart lap 132. Martrix Jr. and Chase Elliott leads him into turns 1 and 2 after they were, they came off of pit road 1 and 2. But look at this. The third generation driver of Ryan Blaney makes it 3 wide on the back straightaway into 3 and 4. Takes 2 for 1 and takes the lead in the middle of 3 and 4. Coming off of turn number 4 to become, I believe, the fifth different leader at the time. However... His lead would be short-lived as his teammate Brad Kozlowski would able to take the lead away from his teammate two laps later on lap 134. Then a near accident would take place in the trial of on lap 135 between Michael McDowell and Bubba Wallace. This took place because Bubba tried to make a hole that was not really going to work. Nudge at the 32 car who then makes contact with the 34 who sends the 34 into Wallace and somehow Wallace not only did he not hit the wall, he managed to keep the car going. He That was a great save between the 34 and the 43. Pit stops will take place on lap 158. Daniel Suarez on the right side and Kozlowski was able to build up his lead to a 2.6 commanding role against Kevin Harvick. However, another caution will come out and it involves another blown tire. The eighth caution of the day, Danny Hamlin. The third JGR driver, I believe, to suffer a right front tires look from Daniel Suarez I mean these right front tires were ridiculous especially with the Toyotas stage 2 with 34 laps ago William Byron on the outside lane getting a push from his teammate Jimmy Johnson in third place with Brad Kozlowski to the inside of him Johnny, uh, William Byron and Brad Kozlowski would be side by side for a good portion of this race as they go three wide and four wide behind them Johnson giving a push to Byron would send Byron to the point however just a couple laps later, Brad Kozlowski was able to get side-by-side -side with William Byron in turns 1 and 2. But he would not be able to clear, clear him. Byron will put up a good fight off of turn 2 and onto the back straightaway. They were just side-drafting. Byron went all the way down low to the white line to try and side-draft Kozlowski. Kozlowski returned the favor to side-draft him into turns 3 and 4. And it looked like this might set up a three-way battle with Kozlowski's teammate, Ryan Blaine. But that was not to be as Kozlowski would clear Byron. However, the ninth cost will come out. For another rear or right front tire, this time it involves the Chevrolet of Ryan Priest, who hits the wall with 12 laps to go, heading into turns 1 and 2. Stage 2, 8 laps remaining. In stage number 2, Hendrick teammates Alex Bowman and William Barron racing, heading into turns 1 and 2. William Barron will then be able to clear Alex Bowman, but that would be short-lived, because one lap later, Alex Bowman will then clear William Byron. So now you probably think, is Byron going to take the lead and win the stage? No, he's not. It is short-lived by Brad Kozlowski, who four laps later takes the lead away from Alex Bowman. And Brad Kozlowski would go on to win stage two. And, of course, guess who finished second? Alex Bowman. Man, what's with this guy and finishing second? Can you finish third or something? Stop finishing second. Anyways, uh, after that, all the drivers will then be brought onto pit road for a 30-second silence to remember the victims of the uh, UNCC school shooting as well as all the men and women that died for our country. So a nice little tribute there from NASCAR. Meanwhile, back to green flag racing. Lap 209, Bra uh, Kyle Busch was able to get out in front of Kevin Harvick, but second place, Chase Elliott getting help from Ryan Blaney. Then nothing would happen. Literally nothing would happen up until 49 laps to go. Uh, yes, 49 laps to go in stage three when the number 19 car of Martrex Jr. then makes contact with Bailey Curry, just washes up the racetrack, gets into the left rear of Bailey Curry, and sends Curry into the inside wall hard. He actually made pretty good contact with that inside wall. Look at the damage on the front end of that number 52 Mustang, but fortunately, he was okay. Then the restart took place on lap 258 with Kyle Busch leading one lap later. The 19 car Truex leaded, and they were just having a back and forth battle. They were just doing crossovers with each other. Uh, it was a very fun battle, but ultimately, Martrex Jr. would then take the lead and hold the lead after that little scuffle between Kyle Busch was going on. Another surprise to see was David Reagan. David Reagan, he had a really good car, was inside the top 10 for a good portion of this race between stage three and the early part of stage four. So it was really nice to see uh, sort of the small teams be able to uh, show some speed in one of the biggest races of the year. And also a fun note to, to look at, up until lap 263 uh, at this time, there was a little fact that Mike Joyce put out that there were more lead changes in this race than the previous three Coke 600s up until lap 263. So that should tell you oh, how the race is going to progress on to the later portions 
of this event. However, nothing would happen after uh, that little scuffle between Kyle Busch and Mark Trix Jr. As Trix Jr. will go on to win stage three with Kyle Busch in second and Chase Elliott in the third position. Then, uh, heading out to pit road to get ready for stage four, Denny Hamlin actually missed his pit stop. Uh, he was actually inside the top eight when that happened. So he lost a lot of momentum. He had to start in the back of the field. Uh, so it was a tough break for Hamlin that will ultimately sort of begin his downfall in the Coke 600. Meanwhile, restart with 93 laps to go. Chase Elliott and Martin Trix Jr. side by side. Elliott and Trix would just have a battle between each other. They had a lot of free put on a good show for both of us. Brad Kislev, excuse me, uh, Kyle Busch gives a good push to nine car of Chase Elliott to sort of continue this side by side battle with Truex and LA, they were just battling back and forth like I said. It was very fun to watch. And I obviously, me being a Chase Elliott fan, I wanted Elliott to take the lead, which he did with 92 laps ago, but then Kurt Busch gets loose underneath Ryan Blaney, makes contact with Kyle Busch, and somehow he does not hit Kevin Harvick, who I think it was, I swear, it was inches, inches. Kevin Harvick missed Kyle, uh, Kurt Busch. Here's an uh, onboard view from Kevin Harvick. Look at how close to this man. Inches, like I said, very close from catastrophe for Kevin Harvick and Kirk Bush. Restart commences with 86 laps to go. Martrix Jr. to the outside lane with Chase Elliott once again on the inside. And it was around this point in time where Truex really had a strong car, and you're gonna have to do something magical in order to beat him. Elliott almost clears him, but Truex hangs on his right rear corner panel. Meanwhile, on board, you saw there with uh, Kyle Larson on the left side of the screen. He just started dropping like a rock, and that will ultimately lead to this. 85 laps to go. Alex Bowman gets loose, trying to chop in front of Joe Logano, and then Kyle Larson spins in the back on the back straightaway and collecting Austin Dillon. And then Kyle Larson goes back up across the racetrack and then collects Austin's brother Ty Dillon, who then hits Ryan Priest to bring out, I guess you could say, the big one on the back straightaway. Here's a look at what happened here. Bowman gets loose, then Larson gets loose, hits the 14 car Boyer who then hits the outside wall, and then Larson just covers the racetrack, tries to save it, hits Austin Dillon, who then makes pretty good contact with that inside wall, and then Larson, probably just no control over his race car, just shoots back up the racetrack, collects Austin's brother Ty, who then Ty, trying to miss everything, hits the 47 car of Ryan Priest. 77 laps to go in the stage, Martrex Jr. and Chase Elliott once again, with Kozlowski trying to force his way to get underneath the number 22 car of Joy Logano, his teammate Ryan Newman gives a good push to Logano, who then gives a good push to the number 19 car of Martrex Jr. While Truex and Elliott were still battling side by side, but at this point in time, Elliott was able to clear the number 19 car of Martrex Jr. However, with 59 laps to go, uh, Elliott's fleet will then begin to shrink, and with 57 to go, Truex and Elliott make contact, heading to turn three and four. Truex was then able, get, able to get ahead of uh, Chase Elliott and then was able to clear the number nine car of Elliott. Then with 51 laps to go, Chris Busher, I mean, he hit the wall and he was able to get fight his way back inside the top 12. Pit stops take place with 45 laps to go, Martrix Jr. with a three second lead. Then with 44 to go, another caution would come out. Can you believe it? When Kevin Harvick goes on pit road, Denny Hamlin would hit the outside wall, blows another freaking right front tire <laughs> and brings out I believe it was the 15th caution yes the yes the 15th caution of the day here's a look at how it took place Denny Hamlin just blows right front tire but luckily this time he was not able to hit the wall but still another caution 36 laps to go Martin Trix Jr. and Chase Elliott this time Truex gets a good jump on the restart and was able to clear Elliott and Logano by a car length or two. However, Truex will not be in the clear. Teammates Ryan Blaney and Joel Logano, while they were having a battle of their own, they were somehow able to close up Truex lead and they had a side-by-side -side three-way battle between Truex and the Penske boys. However, Penske boys of Logano and Blaney then battling side-by-side -side would allow Truex to get away from both of them. Then with 12 laps to go, J Jimmy Johnson gets loose hits the outside wall. One lap later, Ryan Blaney has to come onto pit road due to a track bar issue. And then on that same lap, his teammate, Brad Kozlowski, blows a right front, right rear tire, slides in front of the field and onto pit road, which brought out the 16th and final caution of the day, which was set up a restart with five laps to go. This was shaping up to maybe what they call a five lap shootout. 
However, the people that were out in front was Ryan Newman and David Reagan. Newman, who had a massive dent on the front of his race car, which was going to affect him aerodynamically, and David Reagan was just not that fast enough to stay up in front. And a funny thing about with David Reagan is that when he stayed out in the front, Martrix Jr. and the team actually wanted him to pit, and Reagan's team, uh, Rita Communications, obviously, they were not happy about it. They said, no, we're not coming up at road, we're not gonna lay out, we're in front, we're gonna try and get the best finish as we can, so I thought it was kind of funny, but kind of ridiculous on why Trex would want them to move or go to the back, like... But whatever. Restart with five laps to go. Newman on the inside. Dave Reagan on the outside. Reagan actually gets a good run with a good push from the 19, or from excuse me, from the 18 of Kyle Busch. However, this would be the move of the race. Busch makes it through. I split the middle, but then his teammate Truex makes it four wide, way down to the blue and white line. Then heading to turns three and four, Truex was able to get to third place. Reagan was able to keep the lead for now. Truex was able to then slide up right in front of Logano sideways, but still was able to clear the 38 car of Dave Reagan and was able to take the lead. But Logano was in, been pushing all over the back bumper of Truex, maybe to have him enter faster than what he wanted to. But ultimately, it would not work. And on the final lap, Hamlin would hit hard to the outside wall, just adding another dent to his day. But his teammate Martrix Jr. would take home his second career Coca-Cola 600, beating out Joe Logano by around 10th of a car length to score his second victory of 2019. Here's a look at what happened to his teammate Hamlin. Hamlin just slides up right in front of Eric Amarola, gets loose, and watches hit. Bam! Huge hit into that outside wall. But... Again, luckily his teammate Marshall Jr. Jr. was able to take home the victory in what was honestly a fantastic Coke 600 to watch. So here's a look at the unofficial results for the Coca-Cola 600. Martrex Jr. wins with Joe Logano in second, Kyle Busch in third, Chase Elliott in fourth, Ricky Stones Jr. a nice one for him in the fifth, and how about Chris Buescher? He hit the wall earlier on in the race. We thought he was done, he was out of it, but then manages to rebound to a sixth place run. Alex Bowman in 7th, Jimmy Johnson 8th, and William Byron in ninth. Those trio of Hendrick drivers really showed good speed in the Coke 600 with Kevin Harvick in the Ford rounding out the top 10. His teammate Eric Amarola in just the second base is just a field of Fords. Corey LaJoy, what a run for him and go fast racing to come home in 12th. Ryan Blaney in 13th, Paul Menard 14th, David Reagan in 15th, Ryan Newman 16th, Denny Hamlin even with that hit to that out inside wall. 17th, I guess you could say that's the top 10 for them with the day they've had. Daniel Suarez in 18th. Brad Keselowski, a big surprise. I mean, oh well, yes, he did blow a right rear tire, but kind of shocking because we thought he would have a good run for this race today. And Matt Tiff rounds out the top 20. Now let's take a look at the chase grid following Charlotte Morris Speedway. Um, Mark Drake Jr. moves up to third in the point standings, garnishing 17 playoff points with Kyle Busch the leader with 20, Keselowski with 19, Denny Hammond with 11, 11, Joe Ligano with 10, and Chase Elliott with 7 playoff points. Kevin Harvick is the first one out with, uh, first one I should say without a win, 169 points above the cut line, Kirk Busch 97 points, Ryan Blaney 67 points, Alex Bowman, I believe two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, he was maybe 14th on the grid, and now he's 10th, 64 points above the cut line. Teammates Eric Amarola and Clint Boyer, 11th and 12th respectively. Daniel Suarez, 13th. Jimmy Johnson moves up to 14th, 15 points above the cut line. William Byron, Byron moves up from 19th to 15th, 7 points above the cut line. Kyle Larson holds the final spot, 2 points above the cut line, ahead of Eric Jones with Ryan Newman, 18th. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 19th. And Paul Menard in 20th, 21 points behind. So, what would I rate this race? This is an, I wanna, this is an 8 out of 10. It's an 8 out of 10. Um... Stage two and three, real uh, well, I should say stage three. It was the first portion of stage three and the last half of stage two. Um, it brought my rating a bit down, uh, but this was overall, I think, one of the best Coke Six Hundreds I've ever watched in a long time. Uh, I can't really think of a Coke Six Hundred that I've had this much fun watching. So uh, yeah. Awesome six co six hundred, really an awesome day for motorsports in general. I mean, Monaco, it was it was exciting to see that battle between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen. I really wanted Verstappen to win, but unfortunately he didn't. Uh, Simon Pagano and the Indy five hundred that was an amazing Indianapolis five hundred five hundred. It had everything really. It had strategy. It had 
it had a crash, so there you go. It had an awesome finish, and it had some tempers with Graham Rahal, ha you know, showing his displeasure, having a bit of a uh, issues with Sebastian Bourdais. Alexander Rossi, or Alex, yeah, Alexander Rossi was driving like a madman. He was literally holding his fist, you know, at, at uh, I believe it was Oriol Servia who was a lap down. He was very animated from the usual Alexander Rossi, who was quite calm. So that was fun to see. And obviously that battle between Rossi and Pagano was very fun to watch as well. And then the Coke 600. I wasn't expecting it to be this good, but you surprised me, NASCAR. Um, so, like, of my three um, Moss motorsports picks, I picked Hamilton to win Monaco, Pagano to win Indy, and then I picked Newman, or not Newman, Kyle Busch to win Charlotte. So I'm two for three. Um, overall, it was a great Memorial Day weekend. Uh, yeah, the great three races. So I am happily satisfied. Congratulations to Martrick Jr. and the whole number 19 team. Thank you so much for watching the NASCAR on MDK Inside the Lines post race show. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. Tell me what do you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of this weekend's race? Uh, next week is, oh uh, God, is Pocono. Pocono 400. That'll be Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Jake Cross from NASCAR on MDK. And I'll see you guys in the next video.